glad you're here in my kitchen. One of the easiest things in the world to make is good macaroni and cheese. Now I got the idea because my sister who doesn't cook said, oh why don't you do a video on macaroni and cheese, perfect weather for that. Now I'm going to show you today a simple recipe that is for a Swiss, like Switzerland, macaroni and cheese and or the Italians make it in much the same way. This is good for like four to six people if you want to do that. If you're doing more than four to six people, you know, if you're cooking for 20 or something, then this procedure has to change a little bit. But I'm not going to use a roux. We're just going to do milk, cream, and the cheeses, a little salt and pepper, and of course the noodles. Now, since there's so few ingredients, each ingredient counts for flavor. I'm also going to add, which I'm going to start now as we're talking, a little bit of chopped onion that we're going to saute in this pan. This is a one pot wonder. Um, I've already cooked the noodles and I'm using for this macaroni and cheese a pasta that has a little hole in it. Macaroni, panne, rigatoni, anything like that that has a hole because it sucks up the sauce. So, then, after that, I'll talk about the ingredients a little bit. You could use straight ingredients. In other words, I'm going to use a combination of Gruyere, AOP Gruyere from Switzerland Gruyere. It's so good. And some New York State white cheddar. It's a great combination. The cheddar is going to give it a little sharpness and the Gruyere gives it a bit of nuttiness. This is really wonderful cheese. Great for fondue too. Now having said that, I've already grated the cheeses. Now I do like to grate my own cheese. And the reason I like to grate my own cheese is because the cheese itself is so much better and it doesn't have a coating that the processors have to put on the cheese when they shred it to keep it from gumming up the machine and sticking. So anyway, you get a much better flavor. But So I have a, a KitchenAid stand mixer and uh, you know, even when I was doing so much cheese, when I was in wholesale, I always grated my own because it really does make a difference in the quality of the cheese, if nothing else. So we're sauteing these onions up. Now, let's talk about the milk and the cream. You know, this is one you really want to pay attention to. You want to pay attention to where you're getting your dairy. I won't go into the horrid practices that the big dairy cheap milk producers are using. This milk is from a dairy. I'm in Ohio and you know you can't cross state lines with good milk. Um, however, this milk is Hartzler Dairy and they're in south, southern Ohio somewhere. Anyway, I love this. You put a deposit on the bottle. I think it's $4.99 a gallon. And take the bottle back. And I like milk packed in glass. Take the bottle back and you get your $2 back or just keep exchanging it. Anyway, I'm going to turn this down a little bit while we're talking. Now the difference in the milk quality is just far, it's far superior, that's all I can say. And I'll show you, this is, anyone of my age would remember the milkman and he used to deliver milk in the gallon jars and it had that cream on top. Oh, it's heaven. I know my sister used to go out and get those milk bottles and she just loved that cream. Now the cream is part of what I want to use for this macaroni and cheese. So we've got the really whole milk. Don't make it with skim milk, just eat less. You'll be doing yourself a huge favor. And heavy cream. The Swiss and a lot of Europeans like to use 35% cream because it's a bit richer. Anyway, it's really good. Then, let's talk about the pasta. I'm using dried pasta. Now, when you cook pasta, <clears throat> this amount was 
a half pound of pasta. When you cook it, one pound will yield of dried pasta. This doesn't work for fresh, but a dried pasta yields two and a half pounds, two and a quarter to two and a half, depending on how long you cook it, of the cooked pasta. So just as a point of reference, when you're cooking it, this will be good when I get done with it, probably for three to four people. So I pre-cook this till al dante. You want to cook pasta in plenty of boiling salted water. Should taste like sea salt, not overkill, like a bunch of salt, but just a bit of salt, it's about a tablespoon to the gallon. And it's a gallon to the pound. Make sure it has lots of water to roll around in. Then we're using some heavy cream, salt and fresh pepper. And that's really it. Uh, this is going to get out. Some people like their macaroni and cheese with breadcrumb on top, which is really good. Put it in the oven. I'm not going to do that today because I'm making extra that I will probably portion out and send some over to my sister. And sometimes it gets a little messy when you put the breadcrumb and then you try and portion it and make, you know, good looking in, in takeout containers. But I have the onions, they're nice and soft. I used a red onion only because it's what I had. And I was using it for something else, so I had a half an onion of which I only used a quarter. And I put a little olive oil in the pan, it's sauteed. And now I'm going to put the noodles in there and we're gonna saute those noodles in this little bit of olive oil ever so slightly. Just slightly. You might have to add a little bit because I can hear that that's just a little bit dry. So around the side of the pan, you can hear it pick up a bit now. I'm going to put a little bit of milk in the bottom. I'm going to put a little cream in there. Nice, wonderful, heavy cream. And we're going to stir it up and get the milk and the cream warmed up. I'm actually using about a two to one ratio of milk to heavy cream, but you need the cream to make it creamy. I used white cheddar and the Gruyere, a nice aged sharp white cheddar. We're gonna dump this in there. And now we're going to stir it up till the cheese melts. <clears throat> How simple is this? Much like fettuccine alfredo, except that is a cream and butter that you reduce in a saute pan, then add the pasta, toss it up, then it gets parmesan. This is close to that type of a, of a macaroni dish. And it's really good. There's no two ways about that. This really doesn't take long. All you have to do is by the time you get the pasta cooked, you can have the cheese grated. I always grate extra and put it in the refrigerator. And if I don't use it right away, store the extra grated cheese in your freezer. And then you always have it. And it's ready to use at any time. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. And I have my, I'm gonna stick this in the oven to kind of finish it, because I wanna put, I saved a little cheese aside, and what I'm gonna do is put that over the noodles and put it in the oven to get it nice and golden bubbly. So with this dish, I oiled it slightly to make the cleanup easier. Now another little ingredient that I like to use just sparingly, but it's really good and it goes great with cheese, is a little bit of fresh nutmeg. I love my old-fashioned nutmeg grater. Works great. Bought it at a flea market, I don't know how many years ago. And you buy the whole nutmeg. It has a much better flavor than pre-grated nutmeg. It's really fresh. It's wonderful. And it doesn't really take a lot. So grate a little bit over the top. All right, you can see what I've got. It's been, it's been boiling for a little bit and it's starting to thicken nicely. 
this now is going to go to the oven. You can see how the milk with that little bit of cream thicken this just slightly. So, into this baking dish, into a 400 oven for probably about 15 minutes. We're going to do a little more fresh cracked pepper. I'm going to dust it with just a tiny bit of salt, like the rain's coming down. And now, for this extra cheese on top, Okay, then to the oven until this cheese melts nicely. So you can see what a half a pound of pasta yields. This is actually quite a bit. This is clearly good for four to six people without a doubt because it's pretty rich with all the good milk and good cream. So in the oven we go. Oh boy, right out of the oven. Look at this. Golden, bubbly. Oh, this is like heaven. The cheese melted really nice. And so, that is a very easy macaroni and cheese. I guess I have to wait a little bit because this is going to be so hot. So we'll let this cool down a little bit. I'll put a little on the plate first. Oh, look at this. Oh, nice and creamy. A little crusty on the top. I'm going to add a touch more fresh cracked pepper. I love my fresh cracked pepper. I could, I could put some Parmesan on the top of that. You could actually, you know, there's a whole bunch of ways you can make this. I did Gruyere and cheddar, but you could do blue cheese and cheddar. You could do feta. There's any combination, but you always want to have one sharp cheese. Try it this way, and then you can make it your own. Then there's all sorts of other ingredients you can add, like mushrooms and chicken and, you know, leftover stuff. But for the plain macaroni and cheese, do try this. The kids are going to love it, too. And I made myself a little salad. And I'm going to dress a little citrus salad that should go with that well. Dress, I already put the lemon on. It's got a little olive oil. I have oranges in there. We have to wait to try this. It's really hot. All right, this needs to be tasted. Just a little bit. Hopefully it's cooled down enough. Mm. Oh, heavenly. Just got a little crunch of the cheddar. It got nice and golden on top. I hope you try this because it's really good. It's really easy. And I think everybody will enjoy it. It's adult and kid friendly and it's fast. So, thanks for watching. See you on the next episode. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel for new videos that I'll be putting up. And I have a cookbook up and all that information will be in at the end. So again, thanks for watching.